from different places We all have different names No matter what life brings us Jesus is the same We're just your Methodist To the madness Methodist To the madness Hi, I'm Beth I'm Tim I'm Jessica And we're just your everyday Methodist, Methodist To the madness Hi. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Hi, Beth. <laughs> Remember, I was just thinking about how we used to. Hi, I'm Beth. <laughs> and I'm Jessica. Wait, wait. Shh. Nobody, nobody knows that that's our opening. <laughs> nobody knows that we just used automated, like, default know. recording. Uh, okay. The secrets are coming out on yep. episode 43. That's yep. fine. Yeah. Can you guys believe it's been 43 episodes? Wow. Has it really? Is that an exaggeration? No, it, literally, this oh. is the 43rd episode of Methodist to the Madness. Wow. Th- that's amazing. Do you know what that means? It means at least for 43 weeks, we've done the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which exactly. is incredible for not always anyone. in a row, but always yeah. three weeks. Yeah. So it's, One you know, more. I'm very proud of us. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's so cool. We're like expert podcasters now. World renowned podcast episode I mean, 43. Extraordinaires. <laughs> Extraordinaires. Yeah. Now we're, we're one step closer to making it to the Hall of Fame. Yep. For all podcasting communities. <laughs> so I totally agree. Yeah. But how are you guys doing? How uh how has this past week been? I know Beth's been really bored. She's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm so know. bored. So bored. Yeah. I've been trying to do stuff for myself. I, I just keep remembering this time last year where my house was a mess. I didn't have a kitchen and oh, that's right. trying to do BBS, but also trying to be home so I can let strangers in my house every day just for them to not show up. And I'd be like, what gives? I rearranged my whole day. Nobody showed up. And so that was my whole last year. So yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm, it's not that I'm comparing the two of them, but I think what I'm trying to do this year, which didn't happen as much last year, was like trying to do VBS, but still like let my kids have a summer and still do fun things with my kids. Yeah. So I'm trying to balance it and I'm still trying to do things that um, that are for me. Like on Saturday, I went to Jody's house to to do the mystery uh, tablecloth runner thing and I table runner and I said I wasn't going to talk about this on the podcast but I'm talking about it (laughs) this is what I do I'm like all right we're not gonna bring that up and then I immediately have to bring it up and like (laughs) anyway so I went and um Jody was coming around sprinkling directions on everybody that's what I like to think is happening yeah She just goes from like room to room. Okay, do this. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. The next room, do this. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Wow. Okay. So she's telling us like what we need to do, what how we need to sew it together, how we need to cut it. And um, one of the ladies there said more than once, measure twice, cut once. And I thought that I was doing that in my head, but I cut the fabric too short and I had gotten the amount of fabric that Jody told me I would need for this mystery table runner. So mm-hmm. like there wasn't really much room for error. So I cut it too short and I wasn't going to have enough and I didn't know what to do. So I just started crying. I was just like crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. My fabric was too short and I didn't know how to use my words to <laughs> fix the problem. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, my fabric 
I don't know why I'm crying. And, and I think it's just like, even though I don't have those other factors, it's still spilling out of me in weird ways. Yeah. And, and a really nice lady who wasn't sewing, she was just there to like help out and be a runner. She went out and um, got me the fabric that I needed so I could continue my project. Oh, wow. So nice. Tim, it's the lady that you and I were talking to at the quilting group the week before, BJ. She gave Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah, she's really nice. Yeah, she is. Um, I didn't you know finish that. it, but I, I've made plans to finish it. So Yeah. Who yeah. knew that running was such an emotional release, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or I meant a runner. You are a... You were part of the runner. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, I own I the only running I usually do is running my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is what I did. But it's kind of a funny story because I was like, why is this happening to me? Yeah. And, um and well, that's what I'm here to do is talk about when I cry and it's yeah embarrassing. yeah well I'm glad that, that. <laughs> that I'm glad at, at that location and I'm glad here you feel safe enough to do those things because yeah. what I mean it would have been so uncomfortable if you were in an environment where you weren't able to like no. respond and like release in the way that you that's need. true you know I think that's it's so okay that hard. that's like your response that's you know I feel that way sometimes I and it's like it's it it's dumb because I'm like, what other people must think of me? And what they're thinking is Beth is going through a hard time and needs a little help right now. That's all they're thinking. Yeah. You know? They're not like, okay, weirdo, leave the crier alone. So yeah. I don't right. know. But right. But also it it does um like when I do feel the big emotions, if if people start gathering around me, that does stress me out. So yeah, right, no, that's, right. That's think, probably like the biggest reason that didn't happen this time. But yeah, that's um, good. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I don't like. I'll tell everybody on the podcast all day long, but if everybody is coming to me trying to comfort me at the same time when I'm going through it, I'm like, I can't. Yeah. Right. Right. I feel, I think I can relate in that way too. I don't it's like, especially if I'm having a lot of anxiety and there's like a lot mm -hmm. of people around in terms of like, if I'm at Disneyland and I'm feeling a lot of anxiety and like there's, I'm with a group of people and they're following me. I'm just kind of like high alert, high alert. And I just want to like <laughs> sprint out of Disneyland. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's just, I, I know I have to figure out more tools, but I mean, mm -hmm. listen, I've been going to therapy for, I don't know how many years and I've been yeah. told all the things they're like, do deep breathing. Think of, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, in that moment, I'm like, nope, I'm going to hold my breath and I'm going to think of one thing, you know, the only breathing I'm going to be doing is through my eyes and it'll be. <laughs> 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 right. But, oh. Anyways, anything else though, Beth? Yeah, hold on. My hand's too cool. Um, I started reading a book that my mom gave me a long time ago. Um, I think I have the name in my head right now. It's called But First We Have Coffee by Margaret Jensen, I think. And sounds familiar. It's it's mm. about um the basically it's it's i think it's like an auto but it's not an autobiography but it's based on true events i don't know she basically writes about how her mom and her 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 mom and her dad are both came to the us from norway and her dad had the calling to be a pastor and then he met their mom who like just spends her days singing and you know just teaching the the kids about God and Jesus and um how like her faith in in God was so strong that like it was 
There were so many times in the book where she wrote like, yep, and mom and God had this or something like that. And um, mm-hmm. I actually, if I can find it, I wrote down one of the things that I really liked. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I'd love it. to hear it because it sounds like a book I'd like to read when you're done with it, Beth. Yeah. But it depends on if you can find it or not. Well, right. Yeah. Beth, Beth has uh, left the room. So she's oh. um, currently not uh, right next yeah. to her microphone. So just, we are on standby mode. I just <laughs> and we are back. Yep, okay. she's back. I'm gonna read. You the came whole back book lightning fast. Yeah. If I would have highlighted it instead of just writing it down, it would be. I never book. highlight anything. I uh, I I might write things down, but I never use highlighters. I usually, when I'm reading a book, I use a black Sharpie and I cover all the words I've already read. <laughs> oh. Jessica, can I borrow that book? And you're like, yep. And then he just laughs. <laughs> oh, here, I have special glasses. You can see through the black markings. <laughs> yes. This is the book. First we have coffee and then we talk. Um, and... I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a conversation between the mother and her daughter. And and she was telling her daughter what the secret to being happy was. And mm. um, and she said, having a grateful heart, that's the secret to happiness. And mm. I thought wow. she, awesome. she said it in a much more eloquent and beautiful way than I did. But that was the bottom line. And I just, I I think that that's accurate. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty fast read. It's only 194 pages. I'm about halfway through it. Oh, okay. Awesome. But I also, but that also means I abandoned the book that I was reading before. And I'm going to try not to do that. I do that all the time. it's I think I'm reading like habit. six <laughs> books right now, yeah. but it's fine. It's but, right. But like, la- I did. Oh, another update. I took Facebook completely off of my phone because I just, if you, if you guys need me, you can catch me on Instagram. That's a joke because I don't log into Instagram. <laughs> 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 but I am still on messenger. I just couldn't like, it was hurting my heart too much to like, see the division between our country and like I just can't do it anymore everybody's mean to each other in the comments even that aren't about politics turn into politics in the comments and I was like I can't do this anymore Uh, yeah it's hurting my heart and so I've taken it off my phone I check it on my computer sometimes but because I'm not doing the scrolling that I used to be doing like sometimes I'll just be on the couch and I'm like I don't want to watch tv and just scroll on my phone so I'll just put on music and I'll just read read my book with my eyes because I also listen to lots of books on audible with my ears right right and I made it um eight episodes into bonanza so, nice. nice. <laughs> but the, that's what the real fans want to know about. How far is Beth into Bonanza? Yep. I was getting- <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Owen, Owen just walked into the room like when I said that, and he gave me a look like nobody's saying that, Mom. <laughs> I received I received 20, 20 phone I'm calls. A minion shirt that's way too small. <laughs> you can cut that out if you want. Owen, should she cut that out? That's fine. Sorry. All anyway, right. I, think that's I, all. Say, I received at least 20 phone calls from people asking about that, Beth. So <laughs> it's weird it they're is. calling you and not me. But yeah, they're they're ner- because they're like, I don't want to interrupt Beth. I know she's probably watching Bananas <laughs> Up. I want to know like, <laughs> where is she at? Like, I want to know what episodes. I want to be on the same as Beth. <laughs> and I was like, hold, please. <laughs> no, the, the hold music is the theme song to Bonanza. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, that so, would have been so funny. So I listened to a podcast episode and then I watched the show because yeah. otherwise I won't know what's going on because mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit down to pay enough attention to Bonanza that I'm dissecting the storyline without somebody telling me what it is first. So. Yeah. I love that you found that because that's such a cool insight. It's so silly. The whole podcast is silly, but I love it so much. That's cool. (laughs) That's what's giving me life right now. So that's awesome. It's making me cry less in places, I think. Yeah. Good. Right. Right. That's good. That is good. Yeah. Well, Tim. uh, So. Yeah. So when I when I heard you say Bonanza, I don't know why I keep. Yeah. Did I say this last episode? I keep thinking banana. It's just oh, bonanza, yeah. so it's banana. Called, the banana. podcast is called Bonanas for Bonanza, and they changed oh. the spelling of bananas yeah. to go with. Oh, and I just learned that he calls the bonus content bonus nanas for bonus nanza. And that was <laughs> like, bonus so nana. I'm in too deep. It's like a yes. weird conspiracy theory that nobody but me wants to be a part of. So. <laughs> But I'm not hurting anybody or spreading false things. Just episodes, just plot episodes of Bonanza. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah. So for my update, uh, I'm feeling pretty off today. I think because maybe I ate something too fast yesterday, and uh, I wasn't paying attention to what I was eating. Like, if it, of all things, it was kimchi, which is supposed to help your digestion. But if you just like inhale it, then it's probably not going to help your digestion very much. So I've had an off day pretty much all day. Um, but my mom, she gave me these um, supplements, these beef liver supplements, like grass fed beef liver. And that's supposed to help with all sorts of ailments. And uh, that actually really helped my digestion. It's a, it's almost like a little known secret or something. Like you don't need other digestive like um, relief supplements or whatever. You could just take beef liver. But uh, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Like I said before, disclaimer, uh, beef liver could help your digestion. But you'll have to try it for yourself to uh, confirm. I, I don't think that there's any real problems with the... Uh, taking beef liver supplements unless you're vegetarian um then maybe you would want to avoid taking them um but uh pumpkin is good for upset stomachs for the the vegan oh really it works for dogs i don't know about humans i'm assuming it does the same we're the same as dogs i didn't even know that dogs uh had pumpkin to you like you would eat that dogs would eat pumpkin yeah they actually do that if you put the unsweetened stuff in their food they eat it right up Oh, okay. Nice, nice. I haven't had pumpkin in years. So I don't even know what it tastes like anymore. But but these people, these dogs have been brought up by um a basic white lady. So that's mm. probably they that's probably why they also they won't eat it unless I put pumpkin spice in it. Just oh. Kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry, so Sorry, I keep tipping over your Oh, uh, that's okay. Um yeah, so the next thing is I um, I went to a couple of movies. The first one was in the movie theater. The second was on Apple TV. Uh, the first one was this movie called Twisters. And it was actually a really good movie. Um, I was surprised um, how much I enjoyed it. They kind of, it, it, like, you would think that it was just people chasing tornadoes, but there was a lot of different, like, character um, development. Uh, scenarios that were happening which made it really intriguing just a lot of unexpected situations uh, including the way that the movie ended like I didn't expect that it was going to end the way that it ended so it was like I mean somebody could go into the movie like just enjoying the fact that people were like chasing tornadoes and like uh, you're watching that spectacle on the screen but um, if that's not the most appealing thing uh, there's so many redeeming aspects to the movie that I think pretty much anybody can enjoy it. So um, it was it was a good one. Uh, and then, then I saw this other movie um, with uh, Anna de Armas and Chris Evans called Ghosted. Um, mm-hmm. And it was actually a really good movie. Um, it was a great action flick in general. And 
it kind of was psychological in nature regarding like the way our generation tends to function when it comes to like texting and like uh, negotiating space between like two people, like in, in more intimate relationships. So I thought that was kind of a, a interesting way to like introduce the film, but overall it ended up being a really like great action film that had like a lot of like, great scenes and uh, it was a comprehensible plot you know how the, you you know how you have those action movies where the plot is completely incomprehensible this movie actually did have a plot that was comprehensible and they they did try their best to explain uh what was going on um so that was cool um so i came to some new insight that i wanted to share and that's i've been trying to figure out how i can like overcome little things like uh, feeling like I want to be productive on the weekends when I really don't want to be productive at all. Um, and feeling like I can actually do things even though I'm tired and, and, and so forth, uh, like making the best of my time. And I realized that the problem is I just think too much about it. And I kind of mentioned this last week where I uh, doing like the overthinking thing and, and so forth. And I, I didn't think that this was going to be the successor to that, but I realized it is like directly. And that's, I realized the value of intuition and I'm going to learn as much as I can about intuition. In fact, I found this resource online um, from this person named uh, here. Let me see if I can fetch her name really quick to give her some credit for what I'm going to say. Uh, this person named um, Kim Chesney, and she's written a lot of different like spiritual books and stuff like that. But I think I might read her book called Radical Intuition. Um, but she has this free guide on, on her website uh, called Wake Up Your Intuition Guide. And there's four things that she talks about regarding um, making your, yourself more in tune with intuition. And she says uh, the first is first impressions. Uh, second is resonance, third is discernment, and four is signs. And the way that I see that, it, like as a Christian, and I looked up intuition and Christianity too, and there's like this wonderful article on Christian edu ChristianEducatorsAcademy.com um, that talks about how a Christian can incorporate intuition into their life to where like it makes sense and like it, it can actually enhance your, your spiritual life. Um, but going into what um, what this person was saying uh, that had those four steps, um, yeah, basically, yeah, her name, again, was Kim Chesney. So uh, the first thing is first impressions, right? So you have some idea in mind that your intuition is telling you, like a gut feeling or like you have. So uh, but before I jump into that, intuition is basically um, coming to knowledge or understanding uh, without conscious reasoning. So the exact opposite of what I'm doing, which is like overthinking everything. Um, so I think this actually might like help me to live my life more purposefully. So those four steps, though, is really interesting. The, uh, uh, the, the first one being first impression. So you have like an impression, um, like suddenly you have some understanding or knowledge potentially that could help you. Um, but a, a lot of it could be fleeting. So then you have the second step of resonance. So like you basically what actually resonated with you um, and is it going to provide meaning in your life? And so then the third thing, uh, and this is the especially important one for Christians, is uh, discernment. So like discerning like this um, particular intuitive understanding with that and then discerning between the two and then actually deciding what it is that you want to do with your time, um, like to maybe connect more with the Holy Spirit or God um, and just kind of like live a better life. Um, and uh, then the fourth thing was signs, which I guess that means like, OK, are, are the things that I'm doing actually helping me? Uh, am, am I actually doing things in a better way to like benefit my life, maybe connect with God better or uh, connect with my neighbor better and like love everyone more. Um, and so this was really interesting for me to find out. And I'm going to try to live my life this way more so, and, and then just try to encourage myself to kind of connect myself, like my intuition and my faith into like a more like spiritual, like, uh, life basically like, and I think that will help me connect more with the Holy spirit and, um, just 
kind of live a more purposeful life in the process. So, yeah. yeah. Very exciting, Tim. Oh, thank you. I, re- yeah. I appreciate that. You have a twister of emotions. And- <laughs> Tim, I have one follow-up question. Have what? you seen the first twister that came out in like the 90s? Yeah, yeah, I think so, but... You okay. should know so, Tim. Well, that's the problem. My, I don't remember if the Twister movie that I saw was Twister or was it a different Twister movie? Because okay, so I think they've come up with other. There's two oh. Twister movies, though. The first one is The Wizard of Oz. Mm. And then the second one is Twister. <laughs> if Wait, so if it, Wizard of Oz, it was Twister. If there weren't any other ones, then yes, I must have saw Twister. Okay. I, I actually don't know how many weather related um, movies there are out there. Right, right. But I, I refuse to watch the San Andreas movie just because I don't like to watch movies of things that will probably eventually happen. Mm, I live right next to that fault line, by the way. Oh my gosh. It gets to it? Huh? What'd you say? I live right next to it. Oh, okay. So, uh, so you didn't it happens. Just know it'll be quick for us. Jessica. Jessica. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, Jessica, what's happening in your life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we also saw twisters. Last oh, really? Friday. Cool. Yeah. We, I had pre-ordered tickets, I think like three weeks ago. Cause I was so excited about it. And One, I secretly wish, and this, I don't know if this is a, uh, what's it? If I reveal information. Spoiler. Yeah. I don't know if this is necessarily a spoiler for anything, but all I can say is that if you have seen the first with Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, uh, rest in peace, rest in peace, uh, Bill Paxton, not Helen Hunt. Helen uh, Hunt's still alive. Helen Hunt's still kicking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're two separate movies. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. They're they're two complete. Like they're don't go into watching Twisters and think that you're going to have anything pertaining to the first mm-hmm. Twister movie. So that was the first thing. Second, kind of wish that they would have incorporated some um, of the characters, but. It would only have been really Helen Hunt that could have potentially. Hey, they brought Harold Ramis back for the Ghostbusters movies. Yeah, I mean, something. Something very... <laughs> well, actually, the only correlation, I think, is Dorothy. That was, like, the From main Wizard thing that Oz. was... Wait, what? Right. Yeah. The Dorothy machine. Oh, yeah, the um, Dorothy machine, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, basically, it's the Holy Trinity now with Twister's... Wizard of Oz and Twister. So <laughs> it is finished. Um, but anyways, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I would go back and see it. And um, it was funny. It was heartwarming. It was emotional. Um, a whole bunch of things. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, other than that, this past week, I guess, has been pretty chill. It's Amber's last week of summer break. Oh. Oh. And then I have summer break next week. What? So yeah, the college I work at. And so um it'll I'll still be checking emails to make sure kids are okay. But um, but yeah, I'm like really excited. So yeah, that's amazing. But just because I'm on summer break does not mean that my life is not busy because like I said, it'll be Amber's first week of school of like being able to have access to her classroom. And she currently has two shelves that I have to put together for her classroom. I'll basically be working in her classroom next week is is how I see it because she has back to school night on August 1st. Yeah. August. That's really close guys. That's next whatever day that is. That's the day after VBS. That's next Thursday. Oh, wow. No way. Oh my God. day after yeah, yeah. BBS. That's crazy. So basically the first few days of next week is going to be, she'll have first access to her room, which means putting name tags everywhere for all of her kids. Mm. 
all that kind of stuff. So, and then like the initial smell of the room after the entire summer, which mm. will be really interesting. All those right. left lunch boxes. Maybe it'll smell like yeah. cookies. <laughs> you know what, Tim? I'm going to go in thinking that. I will. I'll definitely go in thinking that. But, uh, Maybe they do smell like cookies. Yeah. Cookies. Hey, right. Then you'll report yeah. back and, and say, oh, Tim said it smelled like cookies, and it did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, other than that, things have been good. We uh, just trucking along, living life to the fullest, crying every once in a while. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's life and we're doing it uh doing it yeah so hey uh jessica and beth um i'm i'm glad you mentioned crying again jessica because <laughs> i wanted i wanted to mention that i am like i don't know if it's just like a technique that i'm missing or something but i basically never cry about anything the only time i cry is when i'm watching a movie or watching a show or something or maybe playing a game that has a scene that encourages yeah. a person to like have the tear jerk thing. Um, uh -huh. And so I think that's because uh, my like inability to cry basically is that maybe I'm trying to be like too strong all the time. And yeah. consequently I'm kind of numbing myself to my own emotions. Hmm. Um, and so that was kind of a realization that I came to like a day or two ago that I could probably be a little more in tune with, how I feel. Maybe I should do like a feeling prayer or feeling meditation or feeling journaling and just kind of like express all my feelings. Or maybe um, like so that I I was gonna say maybe once a week just watch the notebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but no, I hear what you're saying. I, you know, I think it's common, Tim, for I, I think that some people they just they're not criers and that's okay you know it doesn't mean something's wrong yeah. with you but if you want to cry man try to make yourself cry i don't know yeah. like <laughs> sit there and just be like <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you know but yeah i don't think that it's anything wrong no. with you if you're not you know and i'm i know that i'm a very um i've known about myself i'm a very sensitive and emotional person and so um, when something makes me really happy, I'll want to cry. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, and I think that's a Dad normal cried. reaction at times. Cry. Yeah. Yeah. Just no. like, can't understand certain things. You like cry, like, and I think that's okay. Everybody responds differently. Right. And so I think there's probably things that you do instead of, you know, maybe how Beth and I respond to certain things. Right. So, I mean, that's what I would. That's my. Yeah, I, I, since I'm totally, a doctor, you know, so I think. Yeah. That, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I that's that's great. I appreciate that. And then also um, following up with what you said at the end there, I do think that maybe my form of crying would be like writing. So I think I need to like write more. That's very cathartic for me to do that. Um, and I think if I would, was to do that on a regular basis, then. I'd kind of be able to like function better and feel better and everything. Um, I don't know, but, but yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know why I was thinking food for thought, uh, but it is food for thought. Um, that is everybody kind of expresses their feelings in their own way that feels comfortable uh, to or them. Uncomfortable. Or uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but i appreciate that 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 was validating for you to say thank you good yeah you matter tim you matter <laughs> thank you again this is you matter monday so <laughs> you matter <laughs> you know that that actually starts you know uh umm that uh, were you planning to say uh, united methodist um, men or I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> wait, are we moving on to the update section, Tim? Yeah, I know. I said food for thought and United Methodist men. I guess oh, we have a real know. segue here. <laughs> Speaking of that, we don't have men's group this uh, upcoming week. So uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, sorry, men. 
Sorry, <laughs> men. But <laughs> on Wednesday, uh, depending depending on when this <laughs> podcast is released into the world, uh, on July 24th, it's Kids Club at 530 with Beth. And then this is the most important thing. You need to get out your calendar. You need to get out your checkbook. Ooh. You need to get out your Venmo. You need to get out your car and your children. Because on what? July 28th <laughs> through the 31st, it's VBS. So sign yeah. up. Yeah. Take them on over to the church at 520 to get them set up because it starts at 530. They're going to be dancing. They're going to be swimming. They're going to be making bubbles. They're going to be making friends. <laughs> so be ready, everybody. And there might be snacks. It's going to be fantastic. It's crazy. But if you think that that's an amazing thing that kids get to experience that, let me tell you. Something even better than that is happening July 27th, right before VBS. And that is helping to finalize all of the VBS decorating in yes. the Friendship Hall. So everybody, and by Friendship Hall, I mean Social Hall, but we're all friendly and social. So, and Beth coined the new one, Friendship Hall, because of her friend. And you have to know that episode, so go back and I listen to it. it. I'm <laughs> a big about. You're welcome. Yes. So from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on July 27th, this Saturday, you guys, it's time to scoobly yes. go to the church to decorate. This feels like a pep talk for me because I'm like, oh, is that Saturday already? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> me. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> okay. See you Saturday, yeah. guys. Yeah, Saturday. Woo! I think it was everything. the 27th of July. We're going to make everything aquatic. Yes. <laughs> bring, bring your swimsuits, everyone. Just kidding, please. Wear full clothes. No. Um, but that's that's uh, the main things for church updates. But I'm excited for Beth to share a little bit of her Beth's ministry moment where maybe she has some more information regarding VBS, maybe some hints, things that might be occurring during VBS, or maybe she just might tell you one of her secrets of life. Come to VBS. And also, I'm too tired to think of a secret. Um, I'm not running for mayor, so that's fine. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's okay, Beth. yeah, so as we're getting down to the wire, it's almost VBS. Um, I... I think we pretty much have mostly everything that we need. And I was given a tip from one of our church members that uh, the church she used to attend had just finished their VBS. And so she um, she recommended to me asking if maybe we could borrow some of their decorations. And so I reached out and today Miriam and I went and picked up a bunch of decorations that they had made. Awesome. She's letting us borrow some of their inflatable like um sea creatures. There's an octopus that is giant. It's That's so big. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. So, so it's kind of gonna be off. on the piano. It's too big. What? No, it could be on the piano. Yeah, I was thinking the little stand-up piano uh -huh. wall, and I was like, it can't fit on that, Jessica. But now that I remember what piano you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, I think it could fit on there. That's a I was I was picturing the octopus sitting on the bench <laughs> playing the piano. <laughs> well, secretly, that's what I would love to have happen, yeah. but I know that it could totally just like hang out on the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. yeah. <laughs> yeah so so that's exciting. I just need to go through everything and you know put the you know, fit figure out like the the last there's glass here sorry my kid just came down with bare feet and the I don't I don't know if you heard me yell no earlier that's because the dog was trying to get something out that I put in this cup and it's it doesn't matter and he knocked it on the floor and the handle broke. So Oh no. You know, I'm just like sitting here surrounded by glass and I'll probably forget by the time the pod gets over to Oh my gosh. Over. Are I'm you in a home, glass? It's Are so you in a glass case of emotions? I'm in a glass case of emotions and milk was a bad choice. 
<laughs> I keep saying that. I keep saying it's so hot. You know, it's a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, that's right. You know, like half the people know what I'm talking about, but yeah. I don't remember what movie that's from, but I know the same. <laughs> it's from Anchor Man. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we've we've been getting um your donations. Um people have bought things for us on Amazon and and through the group.com website and I'm really excited and we just need to get more kids to sign up. So if you know any kids, sign them up. If is there a way to, to is there a PDF that you have? Did you already share it on? No, I'm, we're going to, uh, someone's going to listen to this and go, what is wrong with this lady? She can't talk. Um, <laughs> Which lady? I was, I, I, was maybe, I couldn't talk earlier. So oh, I don't because know. Because I was going to say, did you share it on Facebook? Then I'm like, no, because you know what? You're off Facebook. Because I was thinking maybe I could share it on our Leona Valley page. I shared it on the children's ministry page. Like, I think maybe before I got were, off Facebook. Okay. I'll um, look for it. I'll, I can post it again. I'll post it on my personal Facebook page. Well, I don't want you computer. to. Okay. No, it's on my computer. And I'm, and I'm not off Facebook completely because I do still need to be connected to it through um church yeah yeah so i just am not i i mean i don't need to be endlessly scrolling on my phone and getting upset so yeah right right i I totally Um, understand when i get too bored on my computer i'll like do a couple scrolls and i'm like i'm bored what else are we gonna do that's good you gotta turn on some uh, roller coaster tycoon there beth that's yes yes roller coaster tycoon is awesome (laughs) that a facebook game no, it's a, you can download it. It's a, it's like, I don't, I'm trying to think back in the day, it was like a disc. I had oh. a CD-ROM. Oh, so right? I'm so big into this. I just have to say something. I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, roll it. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and go into another realm of Tim. This is, <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> so if you go on GOG.com, it stands for good old games. You could download Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Uh, It's only like maybe 10 bucks or something. And you get the whole like, I think it might even be the triple thrill pack if I'm not mistaken. Um, And then what you do is you download this open source package called OpenRCT2. And then you install it on top of the game. And then what happens is that enables all these extra features like you can play online with your friends on the same roller coaster tycoon park. Wow. And I did that with my brother so many times. It is so much fun. Like wow. I'm gonna take care of like the stalls and oh, I'm gonna build this roller coaster. And oh sorry, my roller coaster is like blocking your guests from entering the ride. I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> so it's so much fun. That feels um, too much like real life to me. Somebody <laughs> thinks you could have done it this way, but you did it this way. Other people think that you should do this. And and I'm like, yeah. Mm-mm, no, <laughs> I can do it all day. That's so anyway. incredible, Tim. I didn't know that. That's oh, my, oh, that's my awesome. kids Thank play you. that game, or they used to. Really yeah, like their tycoon. Yeah, yeah, if you still have your old discs, Beth, or uh, same thing for you, Jessica. Oh, I don't. <laughs> no. Oh, you don't. And they were like back in the late nineties. We're oh. talking. Yeah. I think it was in middle school, to be completely honest. <laughs> so that was back in 1935. Okay. <laughs> I don't even think I knew how to build a park normally when I was a kid and played that game. Like I, I, I used to take out maximum loans and then I never pay back the loan. And then I would, <laughs> I had no conceptualization of how the game, how to play the game. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's how I play most games. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what makes it fun. <laughs> you know? Everyone, who cares? <laughs> well, oh my gosh. Okay, that was a digression. Did you have anything else? Ministry moment? Did we do it? Come to VBS. People. Yes. It was a success. Was online. Just like this past Sunday was a success at church with our third sermon of our six part <laughs> series. Yeah. The Gospel According to Dr. Seuss. So for those that were unable to participate, 
uh, in the sermon on Sunday at the 9 a.m. or 11 o'clock or the virtual or the YouTube or the Facebook Live or wherever else it's streamed. <laughs> uh, it was about the sneeches. And then we focused in on James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And I remember early on in the sermon, uh, Pastor Jim started opening up, talking about the book. And I was like, I've never read this <laughs> ever. And then I started to see the images from the book where there was like the pile of money, the some of the sneeches that had the, the stars on their bellies and the other ones that didn't. I was like, wait, I think I have read this. But I think it was like oh. one. I was like, this is a weird book because this person's just getting all their money, whatever. It was the weirdest thing for a, a kid's book. I, Anyways, but, <laughs> that, but I did think that it was a really perfect timing sermon series. Um, some of the things just, you know, relating to maybe why Beth is no longer on Facebook and um, right. a really important story on, you know, all being welcome, regardless of status, whether or not you've got um, incredible wealth, nice velvet shoes, uh, nice slacks. Maybe you're not wearing that and you're wearing, I don't know what, I don't, anyways. because Star, star on your belly. Star on your belly, whatever it is. You don't have a star on your belly. Yeah, and if you don't, like none of that matters. Point right. of contention gone. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. so, uh, and the ultimate thing is wealth and status mean nothing mm -hmm. in the kingdom of heaven. That was like the ultimate story of that. But a lot of things to take away from this. There was an awesome quote that was shared at the end of the sermon, but uh, I'm curious what everybody's takeaways were of this because I feel like there were a lot of different things that you could really get from the sermon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So Beth, did you want to kick us off? Yeah. So um, I had the Nietzsche's book when I was little and I think, wow, there, I could be wrong, but I remember mm -hmm. there being like more than one story about the Nietzsche's in that book. But mm -hmm. I don't, and then I was going to try to find the book, but I don't have any idea where it might even be. So <laughs> Might be in South Dakota. It might be. We might don't be know. It. There's no way of knowing. Yeah. But, no um, but I remember liking the book. But as Pastor Jim read it to everybody, um, I think I realized that when I was a kid, I didn't understand the book and what it what the message was trying to get across. I think I just remembered liking the looks of the Sneetches and I wanted a star on my belly. That was my take. <laughs> yeah. The belly are cool. And no, oh, yeah. the belly are not cool. And that's how I became the person I am today. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Probably had nothing. <laughs> if no one knows, Beth has a massive star tattooed on her belly. I do. Yeah. It's I, massive. I yep. believe it. Nobody else yeah. has one. Yeah. Just me. Yep. Right. But see, Beth gets along really well with everyone. So she learned the lesson from the book. Yeah. She's got a star in her belly. <laughs> <laughs> it's an invisible star that only I can see. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember like, um, I guess I never really fell into the trap of having to have like, the designer clothes or and you won't be cool if you don't have designer clothes. And that's because we didn't have money for designer clothes. And, and I learned very early on, like my mom would use what little money she had to buy my brother, like the Jinko jeans. And, and he would get like two pairs of Jinko jeans. And, um, but she gave us the same amount of money for our clothes. I learned that you can buy more things if you don't buy the name brand. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yay, more things. Yes. And, um, yeah. and I do remember it was I I did have a really hard time in elementary school. Um, I moved around a lot. I think I went to like three different elementary schools and um 
And my last elementary school that I went to was kind of like where it was zoned. We lived in these apartments that were like on the quote unquote rich side of town. And so I was the poor kid going to the school that all these quote unquote rich kids were going to. And Mm -hmm. so I did get made fun of for what I was wearing. And I made the unfortunate mistake of saying that I bought my clothes at Goodwill and that wasn't even true. I had never even been to Goodwill at that point in my life, but somebody else had gone to Goodwill and given me clothes from there. And so anyway, it doesn't matter, but they they made fun of the fact that I bought my clothes from Goodwill. And honestly, that probably is why I dress the way I do today because I just wear whatever makes me happy. And you know what? It's not the label that makes me happy. It's the bright, fun colors. And, you know, so. Yeah. I I do think that was directly because of my childhood. But, you know. Yeah. Sneetches had nothing to do with it. Right. Right. Um, I feel like I can read a little bit to that. Like, yeah, that's a really, that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Beth. Yeah. I, um, didn't really care what people thought of me and I would purposefully it's interesting because I think every generation deals with something different because my sisters in high school my sisters are like 15 years younger than me and going to Goodwill was the cool thing to do that is really cool yeah Goodwill has so much cool stuff yeah Yeah. and but but it was like in my younger years it was like not looked at as a good thing and I remember going to Goodwill and my mom was a single mother for a short time and um, I mean, I wasn't rich, you know? And so, but when I was in high school, after my mom got remarried, I would go to Goodwill and buy old man pants. And, like, I went through a them. phase where I wore old man pants, Jessica. <laughs> and some of them I would cut and they'd be super baggy and I would wear my Hot Topic belt. And then I would wear like a smaller style shirt. I kind of, now that I look back, I think I was kind of, I think I looked kind of like Avril Lavigne. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, I mean, I was like, I wore sweatpants with my pockets out and then other people started doing that. It was very weird. Whoa. Um, but it's interesting how you would look at people and view people based off of what they wore versus how they felt with what they wore. You know, yeah. I was like, I don't care if I anybody... Yeah. You know, so I think I can relate to that. But I do want to say, I think I was interrupting you, though, because I think you were going to speak more. Is that correct? Me? Yeah. Oh, I I don't know. Okay. Should I I share my opinion on this topic, too? (laughs) No, Tim, Tim, for for today's episode, we're just going to have you refrain from. Ladies only. Thank you. This is is next week. Yeah. Yeah. We got some rivalry here. No, Tim, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I um I was actually like one of those like um nerd kids that would talk about anime and video games really loud to uh like my friends and then everybody would look at me really funny, I guess, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh and when I would wear clothes, I would just legitimately just put clothes on. Like I had no sense of like style or anything. And my mom was talking to me about this one day or actually multiple times because she thought it was so interesting how I had no like regard for what kind of clothes that I was wearing. But my brother, on the other hand, would actually care what he was wearing. And like, what, like, why do I just not, not really care? Like basically if there's clothes in my closet and um, I can go out in public with them uh, Mm -hmm. and it's somewhat of whatever would be like culturally acceptable, then, then I'll wear it. Uh, So like if it's clean and um, I feel like wearing it, then, then there you go, basically. Um, But uh, yeah, what? Covering up all the right places. Yeah, exactly. Yes, indeed. Um, Yeah. And so then like my sense of like individuality was being able to express myself like with those interests, I mean, I was kind of socially awkward in high school, but I, I knew what I liked and I was, cool. um, I, <laughs> I was not cool. <laughs> but, 
but but it does kind of lead into like um the sermon because it's like you have like different social groups in like high school or college and things like that and mm -hmm. like you're judged based on like what you like or what you wear or what yeah. you what you participate in and and so forth um so think, uh so yeah i think i realized at a young age that i didn't really fit into any of the groups so that's I how i felt i feel like i just made my own group <laughs> that, that's what I, yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna <laughs> go get people of my own but that happened later you have to wait until like it, you don't have the the hormones and like the undeveloped brain as a teenager right right that comes Absolutely. later for all of our high school listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the large group of high schoolers that are listening. <laughs> Man, yeah. this podcast has Riz, no cap. <laughs> I'm a young person, sorry. No. Yes. So, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> and we've cool. lost each other in that moment because we <laughs> don't know what each other are saying. <laughs> well, that's never going to land with the teenagers anyway. That's a swing and a miss. <laughs> that's fine. Well, Just we're actually yourself. all teenagers at heart, anyways. So make your own group, you guys. You don't have to, if if you can't find a group where they don't accept you, let them come to your group, and you accept. Yes. Them. Yes, I think that's great. I'm the Statue of Liberty for all the misfits. Like, give me your weird, your socially awkward, your, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know if I'm just speaking for myself or something, but um, I think maybe everybody is a little bit weird. And the people that accept your weirdness, then that's, the that tends to be, around. yeah, that's, that's exactly. So if everybody could just accept everybody else's weirdness, then we would have no problems. Like speaking of the, um, I totally forgot the name of those, uh, those wonderful Sneetches. doctor, the, the Sneetches. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, speaking of the Sneetches, it's like, okay, you're weird if you have a star or you're yeah. weird if you don't have a star, yeah. but all in all, you're just weird. So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unlike what we're doing, don't do it. That's yeah. all. If that's not your kind of weird, then you don't have to participate. Right. Right. Totes. Exactly. Totes. Yeah. So, um, Beth, did you want to share anything else uh, regarding your uh, wonderful insight? No. Okay, but that was a <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. But that that was that was an interesting perspective, though. Like I, uh, everything that you were saying kind of like opened up another like door to like what what my group. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i hadn't thought of it from that perspective like basically individuality yeah um, or like yeah i mean that that's that's what it made me think of uh, like when i had heard it from pastor jim i i was really just thinking about the the unity aspect but but then there's also the individuality aspect um mm -hmm. that like being accepted uh, for who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Um, Without people wanting to change you. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Jessica, I'm okay with you being in this group, but if you ever wear socks with sandals, like I can't have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can't be in our group anymore. Sorry. Right. Right. Exactly. Socks with sandals. But... And that'll be called the snocks. <laughs> <laughs> But then people did want to wear socks with their sandals because half of the socks had stars on them. And their mm -hmm. toes got cold. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Moral of the story. Exactly. I think it's weird until your feet get cold. Totally. Yep. On well, that, but have a great evening, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> but um i wanted to say some some other stuff and that's um yeah so that kind of leads into like the judging aspect right so if you have individuality or a lack thereof i should be saying uh then people have a tendency to judge uh everyone else um mm -hmm. and like then i guess that's the perfect segue to mention how jessica had brought up that quote that uh, Pastor Jim had at the very end of the sermon about how we tend to focus on the things that are different or the things that like stand out to us that 
are not something that we like naturally appeal to instead of bringing forth our love and like happiness to someone else um we're we're much for whatever reason we just have a tendency to like judge somebody else or or like what pastor jim was saying about rivalries it's like why why do we have this inclination and so then it's like jesus reminds us that we want to break through all of those barriers and Mm -hmm. like show love to our neighbor um so yeah it was a really like powerful message and i i think that um speaking from like personal experience in my life like i think i may subconsciously like i this probably happens at work most often like i might subconsciously like judge someone and i'm not really like doing it intentionally like i have some malicious intent or anything um but like suddenly i might put somebody else in like another camp regarding like how i treat them and i'm not doing it intentionally so it's like this was a really good reminder for me to like put love first put god first and mm-hmm. try to like treat my neighbor with like just like i would like treat anybody that i love right so we treat our friends a certain way we treat our family members a certain way so we want to we want to treat everyone the same uh like we love them so mm-hmm. yeah 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 and and i want to read that um yeah please i i probably i foobarred it completely i i no you said word salad no i'm just kidding (laughs) you said some key points in there um it says our world has a lot to learn from the sneeches we are far from prone we are for i can't talk we are far more prone to dwell on our differences than we are to celebrate and build upon our common humanity See, you got you got that part, Tim. We Thank stereotype you. people who look, think, act, or believe a certain way. We form prejudices and make jokes about people based on the clothes they wear or what neighborhood they come from. So that came from James W. Kemp, The Gospel According to Dr. Seuss. And um, you know, I'm I'm going to briefly discuss the elephant in the room or the sneech in the room. Uh, just regarding politics and that's immediately what I thought about because I never experienced such a divisive, um, just divided country until like right now. And it's, and for me, it's like, I believe what I believe. Um, everyone else believes what they believe and, you know, you guys believe what you believe. And at the end of the day, I think it's, it's very clear that I I really just want people to be kind because yes. I and and I don't I like I care but I'm also like I respect what everybody's decisions are at the end of the day with whoever like every four years guys we're electing a new president I get it but whoever you're planning on voting for vote for who you think is going to be best for yourself right or maybe right. Your family, whoever mm-hmm. and Whoever you end up deciding on there, I don't know when it started happening to where it was okay to start bashing people who weren't on the same mindset. Right. Yeah. Like, to me, it's just unconscionable. And, and yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm like, man, I've never, I've never really experienced this before. And it makes me really sad because yeah. I have seen things on social media and I, I have only, you know, I don't like to interject myself because nine times out of 10, there's really not a conversation that's going to be had. It's going to become very aggressive very quickly. Right. And I, I'm not that kind of person and I want to lead with love and I just want to lead with kindness about things. And, yeah. and, um, you know, I think for me, I, I, did experience something today. And, um, I, you know, somebody I love very dearly mentioned something and I was like, man, like, this is really too bad, you know, cause I respect you. And, Dang. um, and it just made me sad because you can have an opinion, but don't be unkind and call people yeah. names. And, and, and for me, it's just, it's such a sad thing because, where is humanity going? Where is love going? And where is just 
respecting differences going, yeah. you know, and, and it's okay. Like, I love that we all have different perspectives to bring to God's table, right. but that doesn't mean you throw the mashed potatoes. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That That's a perfect way to describe it. And so, uh, and so that's kind of what I took about this is that, you know, everyone is welcome regardless of your status on whatever you, wherever you are, yes. rich, poor, undecided, Republican, Democrat, independent, green party, purple party, blue party, rainbow Rainbow party. You know, it's like, I just, can we all just focus on one thing? And that is, we all want to live a good life. Yeah. And love each other. And yeah. um, And so it, it just really, it really makes me sad. Um, I, and, and I think I wish that there could be a better conversation in social media about things right. instead of it being just so divisive. And, yeah. and I just give you so much kudos for recognizing a boundary and, right. and removing what you know is, is unhealthy. And, and I've, I have had certain social media off of my phone just cause I don't like seeing the notification numbers on there. And yeah. so I usually just, We'll open it every once in a while, but but I do think that I need to kind of step away. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to mention I I've been doing that for like years, Beth. I, I I basically don't have the Facebook app on my phone, and I only use it for Messenger because. But 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 now is like like more important than ever that we may may want to consider doing that. I think because yeah. for me it was just like okay the scrolling thing like I get random like recommendations from some some thing or like see see some friend doing something and then um I I it just wasn't making me feel good. I didn't feel like I was connecting with anyone um by mm-hmm. by having that. So uh yeah but but yeah um so I guess we're all kind of on the same page when it comes to social media and kind of deciding yeah. that we especially don't want to participate in the divisiveness and, and so forth. Right. And Yeah. I and try I, to like steer it towards love, but I think what's difficult is then people are like, it, it's, it, I don't know, it just, it's like not worth. Yeah. Conversation. You, you know, and, you know, there, there's something interesting that I, that I have to say, and I'm not sure. I think I came to a similar insight way back when, um, or it might have been uh, from that song that I had mentioned, um, the uh, Take Your Time song. But mm-hmm. basically, I feel like everybody thinks that this is just a big like game where they're just kind of like uh, they got their viewpoint and the other person has their viewpoint. And everybody is like a little bit entertained by their own viewpoint on things. Yeah. And, and Like it's and their it's, hobby. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, okay, for... For everybody to disagree and like talk about it and stuff like that but honestly if we were in like some sort of natural disaster or something like like give an example a tornado or an earthquake <laughs> or something like that everybody would be banding together and like showing their love for their neighbor yeah. um and so i wish that everybody kind of had that mindset now where yeah. we're, we're just all together human beings and we're we all like value love and we crave love for each other and ourselves and so forth. So why don't we just like express that now instead of waiting for some kind of disaster to occur? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, uh, and it's, and it's also like, you know, I, I think people are missing the point of what, what an election is. It's, it's like, you read through what each person who's running and like what they stand for and like things that they're like what they would do for healthcare, what they do for social security. Like, you know, those like key points. And then how do those relate to my life? How would I want to proceed with life? And I think I remember that's how, you know, the conversation always was. And now I feel like that is so far removed from the conversation. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not an election, man. This no. is like crazy. This is like a circus. I don't even. It know. is. Right. It's like, yeah. what are we voting for again? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, just when yeah. we finally figure out who's running, let me know, and then I'll. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I don't know. 
Yeah. I know, yeah. Know, yeah. Not learning now, but that's yeah. fine. Everything's right, fine. right. Yeah, I, I was thinking about it from the standpoint of like, maybe if everybody could be all like, play infuriated without throwing the mashed potatoes like that That's my to use your thing. analogy my yeah i mean the thing is pretending to be mad yeah um, yeah and not fun doing than being anything. actually mad yeah and, yeah and then um, like at the end of the day everybody just shakes their each other's hands and it's like like they were playing chess or something like like yeah. you know you got a chess board uh-huh. and like that's like a simulation of a battlefield but then at the end of every chess game people would just shake hands and go good game that's how it needs to be with all of these like exchanges whether it's political whether it's like controversial in general like people yeah. like having some higher level of respect for normal communications with another human being like it yeah. doesn't have to be love it would be awesome if it was love but just have that higher level of respect for like your fellow human beings so that everybody can agree to disagree as john wesley would put it yeah, yeah. totally absolutely yeah. i think that's a great way I found the quote, that, but I think it's a perfect opening for <laughs> me to share something really, Sorry. really insightful. <laughs> I just realized how perfect this fits in because um, she, the little girl who who's now an adult and wrote this book, um, but she, when she was a little girl, didn't have any shoes. So they prayed for shoes. And then when they got shoes, they were like ugly and, you know, she didn't want those shoes. But um, because they were too big, they didn't fit. And so I'm just going to read this little bit. Um, Mama sensed my distress tenderly. She placed her arms around me and quietly, but firmly reminded me that we had prayed for shoes. God answered, not the way we think is best, but God heard and answered. Mama never allowed sympathy to obscure a deeper lesson. Mama continued, pride is a terrible thing, Margaret. It is not so important what we put on our feet, but it is important where we go. Sometimes we have to put on hard things like the shoes so God can keep our feet on the right path. If you worry more about how you look than what you are, you will have many lessons to learn. Someday you will look back and say that this was an important lesson to learn. Remember this, God always answers prayer but not always your way. Wear your shoes with a thankful, humble heart. Shall I tell you the secret to happiness? Oh, yes, Mama. As she gathered me in her arms and stroked my hair, she whispered softly, a thankful heart, Margaret, a thankful heart. Oh, I love that. And remind us the name of the book and the author. This is First We Have Coffee and Then We Talk by Margaret Jensen. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love that, Beth. Thank you for sharing. It's really good. It's what I it's what my soul needs right now, along with bonanza. Yeah. And bananas. Yes. Bana- banana. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that the uh the the antagonist in the Dr. Seuss book, um, the Sneeches, uh yeah. his name was uh I, I forget the first part of his name, but M- McMonkey McBean. V- <laughs> very, very exciting. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. Very clever name. I <laughs> yes. The only problem is he took took all the money from the Sneeches. My gosh, what man! I can't believe he did that. I wonder if there's gonna be a. I wonder if there's gonna be a sequel. A sequel, yeah. (laughs) Hey, wait! um, You know, I could sneeze here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's go ahead and yawn into prayer requests. Yep, that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, Beth, what are some prayers? Um, um, I can't think of one, but uh, if that's the one, prayers for strain. I don't know. Yep, and prayers that we get through VBS smoothly. I I know most things don't run smoothly because that's how things work. But I just we need to. I I want to be able to get through this, but also remember to enjoy it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's my prayer always and forever. Wonderful. So, let's get through this, but let's also live in the moment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I feel like this is like the most significant give and take a prayer that I could have so far because 
<laughs> Beth, I, I need strength. I, I, I'd like a prayer for strength, but also okay. uh, something I uh, forgot to mention during my check-in is there's this book called Feel Good Productivity. And um, basically that person talks about that the secret formula to being more productive is to just enjoy all the productivity, like all the work and so forth. So my prayer is to like actually be able to find joy in my work so that I can overcome those obstacles that are holding me back. Um, and uh, then the other part is just kind of a lead, a lead in or a lead out, I should say, from my check in. Um, just to be able to practice intuition so that I can kind of be more in tune with myself, limit overthinking and, uh, connect more with God and maybe get a better connection with the Holy spirit and, um, so forth. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think for me this next week, just prayers to, I don't know, just, I guess, quit yawning so much. Um, oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but just, I think prayers for everybody and where their hearts are at, um, mm. from now until, uh, November and that yeah. everybody even after can, November, even after November, uh, forever Thank until you. like, uh, February 14th, you know, like, We'll start with love today and end on the love day with all love. With so everybody start your day with that. Um, but then also just, you know, for Amber, as she gets prepared to go back to school. Um, and I pray that we can finish this fence outside of our house soon because I feel like it's been out there for so long, but it's been a billion degrees outside, which is why we haven't oh, been out gosh. there. And so, but we're going to get some reprieve. I think next week it's going to be like in the eighties out here, which is awesome. What? Yeah. It's going to be a game changer. Like a cold guys. Wow. I know it's cold fronts coming in. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my prayers and cold front coming in hot. I mean, cold. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's also right. just be kind to each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a bad world out there. Let's lead with love. Yes. A, a prayer us, that we can do that. A lot yeah. of us are just one bad minor inconvenience away from a breakdown. So. Yes. Right. That's true. Yeah. It's like wow. we don't know what our neighbor is facing right now. Um, and so okay. if we show that love and compassion and understanding then we're able to like maybe be that that light in that person's darkness um yeah. because we we just don't know what everybody's going through uh, let's so just, let's that's just what we can do we want to see them in the world yeah be the just change that you want to see in the, the world just yeah <laughs> like man yeah. that's such an ori- that's an original you should uh coin that I think I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm really glad. I, that's one of my that favorite to that. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, same here. Yeah. But um, hey, uh, you said uh, reprieve, Jessica. I was thinking premiere for some reason. <laughs> so like after all this hot weather, we, we got the premiere of like nice weather, you know. Yeah. yeah. The premiere of cooler weather is coming in uh, <laughs> next week. So get your tickets. I'll be charging $3 each. <laughs> they will sell <laughs> out. Hey, th- there might be bananas and you might accidentally <laughs> spend the $3 on the bananas. Yes. <laughs> if you would like um, a jacket, I'll, it'll be $10 more. Um, <laughs> there will be a star on it, though. There will be, yes. Aha. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's good to know. All right. Well, guys, it was good to see you. I hope the listeners were able to learn something from us. If you didn't, well, I hope you've had a good time wasting your time with us. <laughs> so, with that being said, hey, mad, you Methodist. We all have different names. No matter what life brings us, Jesus is the same. We're just your Methodist to the madness. Methodist.
to this, to the madness.